You're listening to The Hello Well with Danielle Show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and travel related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Welcome to the Hello Well with Danielle podcast, your weekly mental vacation from the daily grind for busy women who just need a moment to pause, breathe, and woosa. And I think we all can use a moment of woosa. My name is Danielle Washington, and I'm your host. And I know the last couple episodes have been a little bit heavy in conversation. So this week I'm like, we're going to go a little bit lighter. And this started off as a joke to myself because I was feeling very stressed out. And I started creating what I'm calling the to-do list for overstressed, busy women who are always helping others. Um, and then I realized, I'm like, this is it was funny at first, but I'm like, this is actually a pretty good to-do list for some people, including myself, because I was feeling overstressed. I was feeling overworked. I was feeling like somehow or another, I ended up back on that hamster wheel and I was just getting by and just doing what I had to do. And I was just like, okay, I, I need to stop because this is not the rabbit hole that I want to go down. I've been down this rabbit hole before and it didn't really feel good. And so I created this list as a joke. But again, you know, when you are an overstressed woman, or it could be a man too, but if you're overstressed and constantly going, this is a list for you. I, I can't say I guarantee, but I can say that this will, you add this to your to-do list, these, these couple of items, it should help you kind of slow down, get off the wheel, and being able to take better care of yourself. So I encourage you to continue listening to the rest of this podcast. But before we do, I always like for us to kind of tune in by taking a few collective breaths together. So if you can, I invite you to close your eyes. And we're going to inhale through our nose, inhaling deeply. And we're gonna sigh out of our mouth. Again, inhaling deeply through your nose. Sighing out. One last time, taking the deepest inhale you've taken all day. And exhale. I feel like sometimes we just need that exhale. I don't know if you ever pay attention to your breath, but a lot of us are not fully breathing. We're, not, we're doing shallow breathing. And so when you're able to take a deep exhale and letting your body release the toxin, letting the muscles relax, it makes a difference. Because, I don't know, being stressed out is not fun. I don't know anyone who loves being stressed out. I know people who... Well, that's interesting. I don't know if I can say that they love being stressed out, but I know people who love being busy because it gives them value. It gives them a sense of purpose. But it doesn't make the body feel any better. It doesn't give you clarity. Honestly, when you're overstressed, you're not as as productive as you could be. So I, playing with myself, was like, I'm going to create this list. And so here is the list. So the first thing on the list of the to-do list for overstressed, busy women who are always helping others is outsourcing your superpowers. Yep, it's time to outsource your superpowers, identifying some, just identify one superpower. What is one superpower week? And I know that you have one. We all have that superpower. I think my superpower, I have a couple, but what would be the one superpower that I say that I have? I think the superpower would be my ability to kind of know what people are looking for before they need. And so I'm always trying to give them what they need because I already, you know, I intuitively have the ability to understand, oh, they're going to be asking for this. 
I had a boss who would kind of get mad at me for doing that. You know, but like he would ask me for something. I'm like, oh yeah, I already gave it to you. Or I'd order, you know, his food for him because I was his assistant at the time. And he was like, how did you know what I wanted today? I'm like, oh, I just knew. And it wasn't like he ordered the same thing all the time. I just knew. And so he was like, one point in time, he told me, I just need you to let me act like I have my own thoughts. I don't know how you always know what I want before I know what I want, but I need you to act like I'm the one coming with the thoughts. So that's my superpower. So identify your superpower, just one of your superpowers. And honestly, see if other people, not even see, identify with your superpower you use to help other people. And for one day, allow someone else to wear that cape. Allow someone else to be the superhero in your world and see how the world manages with you not being the superhero for the day. Spoiler alert, they're going to do just fine. But, you know, sometimes we don't think that it's going to be that way. So we're like, no, we have to be the superhero. We are the superhero. Number two on your to-do list for overstressed, busy women who need help just kind of taking care of themselves would be hosting a solo dance party. I think I wrote this because I love solo dance party. And it's funny in my notes, I wrote, you know, close the curtains because I typically have my curtains open and people are watching me dance. And normally I don't care, but if I'm really going to have a knockdown, I'm like letting loose dance party it's probably advisable to close the curtains. So if you're like me and you normally have the curtains open, close those curtains, blast your favorite tunes, dance like nobody is watching because, oh wait, they're not because the curtains are closed. And it's all about enjoying the night out without any need to like leave your living room. And it's also a great way to like release toxins in your body and just kind of have some fun. I think we can use some fun. Number three on my list was unsubscribe from the chaos. Yeah, unsubscribe from the chaos. That's a huge one. So that take 10 minutes to unsubscribe from the emails that add stress to your day or your distractions. I know that we all get a lot of spam and I've gone through my mailbox and I'll try to unsubscribe from or block things that are spam. But there's so many emails that aren't spam that I get that I always tell myself, oh, you're going to go back and read that. I'm going to read that. I'm not going to unsubscribe because I'm going to go back and read that. And then later on, months later, I have, you know, over 100 emails from one person who wasn't spam when I first started getting on their email list. But now it feels like spam because there's no way I'm going back and looking at these hundred unread emails. So if you can, just do it for five minutes. Five minutes a week, maybe. Pick a time, pick a day, and just start unsubscribing from emails. Consider it you're decluttering your digital life to make space for peace. And that's so important. I don't think it's just that we need to focus in on having space and cleanliness in our physical life. Our email life can feel overwhelming. Like when you have an email box that has 20,000 emails unread and you're kind of, oh my God, I have all these things. Even if you're just seeing the note on the notification of the time or how many emails you have, that can feel stressful as well. So a way to help you not overstressed is a way to start stopping some of the emails. You can't, you know, you can try to get rid of all the ones you have, but one way to stop more emails from coming in is by decluttering your email and unsubscribing. Next on the list, number four. Number four is one of my favorites, one of my favorites, and that is nature detox walks. I love walking in nature. I don't do it as much as I would love to. There's no rationale behind it. Minus me saying to myself, oh, you don't have time. Oh, I'll get to it. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Always making excuses. Not 
always, but you know, enough to where I feel guilty and shame for not walking out in nature as much because I know what it's like when I walk in nature. I feel rejuvenated. I get downloads. I feel happy. I know that I feel better than I did beforehand. So I invite you to go on walks without your phone. I said that right. Go on a walk without your phone, or at least maybe your phone's in the car somewhere or you just don't need it, or turn the phone off if you really have to have your phone with you. And just observe nature. Observe the sky. Observe the sounds around you. Observe everything you hear, see, touch. And really be present. And that's the goal. The goal of this number four, this nature detox walk is simply being present. Number five on the list is creating a DIY spa hour. And this is not talking about, oh, I'm going to a spa and spending a lot of money because then that could be stressful, spending the extra money. I'm talking about keeping it mad simple. Create a home spa experience with whatever you have on hand. You don't have to buy a thing. If it's taking a long bath and putting some salt in it, great. If you have some essential oils, that's great too. Just figure out what it is. Maybe it's a DIY face mask or just moisturizing your feet. That can feel like a massage right there. Like just taking some almond oil, rubbing your body. That can be a spa experience, playing some relaxing music. Whatever it is, treat yourself to what feels like a spa at home. Next on the list is read a just for fun book. I often find myself reading for work, for business, you know, as an entrepreneur, as someone who's constantly learning or trying to learn new things. It's rare I read books for just for fun. I bought myself some um, around Christmas or actually had people buy me books around Christmas. And so I've been dying to read a couple of those. And maybe I'll put a couple of the books that I've been enjoying. One book that I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying and is a book that I've actually read twice that's got me reading it twice versus reading other things. So it tells you that I really think it's a good book. It was called The Fortune Teller. I know the woman's first name was Gwendolyn something, but I can't remember her last name. But it is probably one of my favorite books that I've now read twice. That's how much I like the book. So I encourage you to pick up a book that's purely entertainment. No self-help, no educational texts. Like just literally allow yourself to be lost in the story without trying to extract lessons. That's the other thing. Even if it's a fictional book, we still be trying to find some lessons. No lessons. No lessons. Let the book truly be just trash. Maybe it's a Joan Collins or Jackie Collins books. I liked those when I was a kid. I don't know what that says about me as a kid, but those were the books I was reading. Another major to-do that should be on your list for any overstressed woman is taking silent mornings. Silent morning coffee or tea. I'm a tea girl. Whatever your beverage of choice, spend your morning with your beverage and time in silence. You can contemplate the warmth of the cup. You can, you know, really be present in tasting every ounce that you're drinking. All I'm saying is take this moment to be silent, no screens, no talking, and just, it's just you in the moment. It's just you and the cup. And see how that feels. Last on my list, because I kept it short, was creating gratitude doodles. I'm not a doodle girl, but I was just like, you know what? This would be fun to do, kind of just spend a few minutes doodling things that I was grateful for. Like oftentimes I will say my gratitude in my head, but like, and I've been recently creating a gratitude journal, but like 
when days when it's not even a journal, because I feel like a journal still feels like it's a task. It's another check on the to-do list. But when you're having moments when you're not being as productive, maybe you're in a meeting, maybe you just need a moment to pause. I like the ideal of just, and I call it doodling because it's like, it makes it feel like I'm kind of you know, doing something lazy fair and it's okay to do when it's for fun. It's like, I'm doodling things that I'm grateful for. Like no artistic skills required. I may make, you know, some stick figures and abstract shapes are totally welcomed and I'm creating what I'm grateful for. I'm drawing it out. So maybe I'm grateful for nature. So I'm drawing out a picture of, you know, walk me walking in the park. And so that for me is my to-do list. If I had to give you two bonus ones, which they were on the list, but I was like, eh, I don't think I should sell them those things, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. The other one was tech-free zone. You know, after 8 p.m., declare the tech-free zone that in your home, like there's no tech, there's no phone, there's no TV. This is a time for those books that are for entertainment only. Maybe it's a puzzle, maybe it's coloring, whatever it is, it is time for you to get back to entertaining yourself. And then lastly is stargazing in the siesta. Like I feel like living in Italy and spending time in Spain, that siesta, that midday break was everything. But what I also love about when I go to places when I'm out in the rural area and I could just look at the stars, I feel good. So I invite you to lie down outside or by a window at night and just stargaze. Let the universe take you in to its beautiful scenic view and let it entertain you as you remind you to just breathe and honestly, just relax. I hope this list is helpful to you. I hope that you got, you'll got you take at least one or two of these to-do lists and put them on your list. If not, putting all 10. Let me know. Send me a note about if you're going to add these to your own to-do list or if you have your own to-do list for being an overstressed woman. Let a sister know because I think for me, what started off as a fun and game was like, oh, yeah, I can kind of use a lot of these things. All right, on that note, I will talk to you guys next week. Ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. Make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music, and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello Well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram, and Hello Well Danny on Twitter. And if you like hella, hella, hella love the show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening and I hope to see you next week. Ciao.